Hey guys, what's going on and welcome to this video. This video is going to be a quick video. We've had something happen during a breeding attempt for one of the Leos. Um, we switched males to sort of change it up a bit. Well, one of the males didn't actually like one of the females, unfortunately. So, they ended up fighting. Now, the female has somewhat of a crushed slash cut up tail as well as a cut along the side of her neck and slightly underneath her neck. Um, not too deep, thank god. The tail does look like it's the worst, but the tails are just a load of fat, which is probably why. Um, but anyways, we're just going to show you, let's say, if something's happened and you need a treatment, of, but it's not like a treatment where I'd advise you to go for a vet more of a treatment of where maybe your leopard gecko or snake for even or other lizard has a, a bit of a cut that's not too deep and doesn't require veterinary treatment I'm just going to show you how I treat my animals and what I found works for me which may work for you as well so anyways let's get straight into the video <music> female um, and just find it. yeah as you can see she's got a bit of a cut on her neck there off where the male originally grabbed her and started throwing her around as well as a pretty bruised swollen cut up tail and um, that's slightly indented and looks a bit crushed doesn't look as crushed as what it used to be like three four minutes ago because it has swollen up um, but anyways what I'm gonna do is just quickly bathe her. In here, I've got a nice little bath of lukewarm water. It is literally just water, no treatment or anything yet. I'm just gonna very, very gently pick her up because I don't want to hurt her. Just place her in the bath. Oh, she doesn't like that. out from under oh there I'll just hold her still she really does not like the bath there I've settled her down a little bit just mainly got the tail under as you can tell she started rolling um, the water isn't too deep actually, it's around the height you'd need it to be if you were to bathe the gecko. Um, she's just currently in a bit of stress and she didn't like that. But now that I've sort of soaked her for a little bit, I'm just going to keep her there because the tail's my main issue. Um, basically the reason she would have had a little freak out there is although she climbed into the water, her instant reaction would have been, oh no, I'm going to drown. But I've managed to calm her down a little bit and stop her rolling. Um, no extra damage has been done there. Luckily, um, just going to have her sit here. She can crawl up under my hand when she's done. And I think she's also realised that she's not going to drown. Just leave us sitting there like that and I'll just fast forward to the next part when I get her right, out. Right guys, so she's done in the bath there. She's quite stressed actually because uh, it doesn't surprise us but when I took her out of the bath she was making noises. Um, she wasn't like screaming or anything to say she was super stressed. But uh, what I've got is just some sterile cotton pads. What I am going to do is get a couple out. Um, I'm just going to soak them in lukewarm water. And I've just got three there. First one, just going to take out now. Give it a bit of a squeeze. 
so there you've got a damp cloth like that I'm just going to fold it up like that and just gently touch the areas where she's cut obviously you don't want to be too rough especially around the tail um, I'm just going to gently touch that area because you can see where there is some exposed fat try to get underneath it yeah, she's got a big cut there as you can tell um, very very gently get under there as well the tail in my opinion here is definitely the most important um, she will actually that will heal no problem with all the bit on the tail although it does look like there's quite a bit of damage there but if you do think about it these geckos do have the capability to completely drop the tails and then regrow them um, but now that one's done after a bit of damming I'm gonna get the second one just give that a bit of a squeeze get all the water out and then do the same with the second one just gently don't really don't want it to drop our tail that's why we want to uh, do it gently just then gently dab it as well we don't want to stroke it in case we open up the wound more just want to lightly press on it and then I'll just get the bit on her neck again and then get the third one drain the water out of this I'll squeeze it out all that and then just do the same with this one You can see it on the bottom of our tail there where it's all red, it's quite cut up. It's just an entire chunk of loose fat. Um, just keep it sterile, keep it clean, and it should heal no problem. But now that's done, I'm going to take another cotton swab thing, a bit of cotton there, and I'm just going to place that in the water, take it out, not leave it to soak. Get rid of any excess water and then get some tamadine, which is a veterinary wound and skin cleanser for reptiles and tortoises. Um, it's an antibacterial and antifungal uh, liquid, great for cleansing wounds washing infecting areas as well it's also good for shell rot and mouth rot um, and anyways just give the bottle a shake up take the lid off just dab this on top and then there uh, just got a bit on there like that we're just gonna gently dab the wounds with it and the main focus is on the tail again Stay in there, good girl. Yeah, see, it's not that bad, is it? Where are you going? Pass that neck. Just get that neck as well. Oh, she's climbing out. Come on, because I don't want to touch you. Cut on your tail. Just 
just get the other side of your neck just in case because I can't really see the cut anymore where you're constantly moving. Get under your neck as well. Since there was a minor cut under your neck. Just keep doing that tail. So that tail is probably the worst of them all. And you get. You're not climbing out. There. And then. So that's it. I'm just going to leave it there. And I'll set up a small. Basic. Hospital tub. Slightly larger than this. And we'll keep eye on that for the meantime. So I'll be right back. Alright guys. So this is what I've got set up so far. Um, it's basically a drawer from a shelving system which I've just put right there on the table um, there's no water bowl in at the minute I'm gonna quickly get one of them up I'm just wanna get the female in um, no hide either because I don't wanna keep a monitor on her over the next few hours if she's doing alright within a good few hours time then I put a hide in so she feels more secure but I am not really too bothered about the hide obviously I wanna keep an eye on her for the next couple of hours and also it's going in a shelf which is quite dark um, so I'll just gently pick the female up and we'll place her in yeah the other thing as well I kind of ran out of a uh, kitchen roll um, which I did not know until now when I went to go grab it but uh, yeah so I've just Use toilet roll instead, um, sterile, fresh out the packet, so it'll do until I can grab some kitchen roll. But as I say, just place the female in. I'm going to place a water ball in as well. Like I say, I'm just going to do that after the video because, yeah, I don't want the video getting too long. But yeah, anyways, what we're going to do is place are on the top shelf in this rack what I usually do is when it's not breeding season have a male there and a male there um, and then I've always got one spare for a hospital tank uh, during the breeding season and obviously because the males are in I can put a female in one of them or just keep the female in the thing because I do have the females on bare bottom um, but yeah, that's her there. Just wandering around. She seems to be doing okay. Like I say, I'm going to keep an eye on her for the next couple of hours. Then I'll put a hide in. I'm just going to sort a water dish up for the video now. Well, not for the video. I'm going to sort a water dish out for her now. Uh, but I am going to end the video before right I do Right, guys. That. So that's the end of this video. Um, you've seen how I treated her. Um, Obviously, what I am going to do in a couple of weeks' time, just to help with the healing process, obviously that's tamadine, uh, tamadine, that's how you say it, not tamadine, but uh, yeah, that's tamadine, that's what I've just used at the moment to just quickly get them all cleansed and make sure no bacteria gets in there. What I am going to do is just do, say, once a week, I'm going to get some aloe vera and just put some aloe vera cream over the wounds as well which will absolutely help her significantly in terms of healing um, it will take quite a while to heal because reptiles have a slower metabolism so they heal a lot slower than us um, but yeah anyways that's it for today's video hopefully you has learned something and like I say I'm going to repeat this now, because you've seen this video, please do not think that you can just be like, oh yeah, right, this is injured, I'll just treat her. Um, I know what I'm doing for certain things, that's how I've been able to treat her myself. What I will advise 
everyone to do is seek veterinary advice from a professional reptile expert or herpetology vet um, before you go ahead and treat any animal with any injury no matter what always seek advice from a vet first like I said I know what I'm doing that's why I've treated her myself without seeking any advice from a vet expert um, but yeah anyways like share subscribe check out my Instagram I'll leave that in the description below as well as my TikTok and Facebook and I'll see you guys in the next one oh, no, no.